Evening everyone, hope you're all well. We've got Jason Suguru tonight, it's our Instagram live number nine. So hopefully we'll have a few join us in a moment. He's a British, Irish and men's champion. It's nice to see a few of you joining, just waiting for Jason to join. I'm just adding Jason now. If you've got any questions for Jason, then just type away. He's ready to answer your questions. Hi, Jason. How are you? Hey, very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Thanks for joining us. You know, we, like I say, we've, as you've probably seen, we've had so many people uh, get involved. It's been fantastic and it's great you're amongst the lineup. So thank you for that. No, thanks for having me. I like no. I said, I've, I've, uh, my brother did 25 years in the army, so he was with the Royal Green Jackets and then became a rifleman. So uh, he, he had his dine out a few years back. So it's something that I've, I've wanted to get involved with the Army TT for a good while and tried to convince him to pick up a bat when he was, when he was there as well, but, but was reluctant. He kind of gave up when I started beating him when we were young. So. Oh, I see, I see. Well, obviously, um, that's fantastic. And it's great you want to sort of get involved with us and we'll touch base in with that shortly. But just in case, because we have beginners you know, that I've just picked up about just to try something new to National League. You know, we've got some great players, which is great. Perfect. Can you just do a little intro, just what you've achieved? Yeah, of course. So, um, so I, I played quite a bit. Um, always had to subsidise my playing with, with a bit of coaching. Mm. Um, so I've been coaching for about 20 years. I'm the director of, of sport for um, a sport for development charity. So we take uh, young people from across London, from absolute beginners, um, I've never touched a bat before. Mm. Living in deprived areas in the main um, sort of have behavioural or, or financial difficulties and we, we build these young people through sport, mm. through our sport for development method which is known as STEP which is social thinking, emotional and physical development. I've been okay. doing that now working for Greenhouse for the best part of, of 20 years. Uh, over 100 national titles for young from, from, from anything from sort of under nines right up to some vets. Mm. Um, big in the London table tennis scene, have, have, have sort of played for Ireland and, and travelled internationally. But, but like I say, my main passion, and I knew when I had to hang up my bat, was when I was away playing internationals and I was texting uh, teachers from the school I was based at to find out how the mm. kids were getting on in competitions. So, yeah. oh, okay. So uh, uh, a much, uh, uh, my sort of playing career fell, a, fell apart because I was more interested in seeing how the development of the people I, I was coaching was getting on. So. Oh, okay. No, that's, that's, that's fantastic. You know, it's a good insight. It seems great that you want to help others. And obviously that was your passion and you're continuing it, continuing with that. Um, so what would you say, what was your highlight? Was it winning all those, you know, 10 Premier League titles in a row? What would you say was your highlight? I mean, my dad started the club that, that I won the 10 Premier League titles for and, and he, he passed away unfortunately before we even joined the British League so we joined the British League I think in Division 5, one Division 5, one Division 4, one Division 3, one Division 1, got promoted to the Premier, stayed up by the skin of our teeth the first year and then went on to win 10 in a row after that. Um, that probably was the highlight in terms of the journey with so many different teammates and so many mm. different cultures so in that time I played with probably, I think I was the only one that did the whole 16 years in okay. the same team so so I, I became captain of the team and played 16 years in one team which was incredibly incredible good fun and the best part of it like i say was playing with so many different teammates from all over the world um london being the melting pot that is we had players from, from the caribbean from the states oh, from, wow. from africa um, and and I, I just had some incredible experiences traveling around and learning about different cultures um and about different ways broadening the mind and, and uh, yeah so actually that was probably preparing me for, for my coaching career even in my playing career days I was I was always interested in learning about others so, so oh. it's an incredible experience I mean becoming British British champion uh, British men's champion was, was was something I wanted to do uh, I represented Ireland and no Irish player had ever won it so I was I'm still the only Irish player to have ever won the British and Irish championship so so even with this London accent doesn't sound very strong Irish but but Strong family Irish, uh, so uh, yeah, so no, that's an incredible achievement, isn't it? So, um, want to treasure 
Um, so from all the events you've been to competing, where would you, what's your favourite out of them all, would you say? Or is it too hard to decide? I mean, I tend to, I tend to, I've tended to enjoy my, the, the training experiences rather than the competition experiences. Oh, okay, because, well, like, they're, always, they're always a little bit longer and you get, you get a chance to look around a little bit more. You know, mm. I, playing table tennis, you often travel to competitions, world championships, or whatever you're playing. You don't get to see much of a town. You fly mm. in a day, couple of days before, day before, play a competition. If you do mm. reasonably well, you'll be in it till the end. If you don't do too well, you'll see more of the town, which is what you don't want to do. So, yeah, of course. But, so yeah, so 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 that, so that that's always been nice to travel and see different places. But for me, yeah, the training experiences. Uh, my the one that stands out the most for me was when I was um, eleven, going on twelve. Uh, I went to, to China for a number of months um, on my own. I had a Chinese coach in, in London who who, uh, who would go with me. Okay. Uh, took me over there and took me to the National Sports Centre in, in Beijing. And I lived there on my own, actually, with all the different athletes. So they had Olympic swimmers there and, and from, from Australia and different wow. martial arts experts. It was a real good learning experience. I absolutely loved it. So that was probably my highlight of all of my table tennis was, was being over there for a number of months, getting my hair cut and then bagging my hair and... Yeah. Blonde hair. Well, it was blonde once upon a time. I think it's more clean. But, but yeah. I won't possibly comment. <laughs> we look after our guests. Um, anyway, yeah. Someone's just said Jason is one of ping pong heroes. So obviously, you've got a lot of fans on here. Um, we had a few questions come in actually. Um, you know, when I shared the stories. So someone's just put. Um, I think it's from London Progress Table Tennis Club. I don't know if that rings a bell. Yeah, I assume it does. Sure. Yeah, so Ashley, I think it's Stokes, he's put, will there ever be something like this again? So I don't know what he's referring to. Maybe you can elaborate. So that was the club I was talking about that I played for for 16 years. Um, okay. Uh, it's a difficult one to answer. I mean, one of the biggest failures for me of, of, of in British table tennis, actually, is, is a real lack of good club structure. And what I mean by that is a sense of family. I think table mm. tennis, there tends to be at the higher level, obviously, when people want to play for a longer period of time, they start to try and think about making a little bit of a living and they travel from club to club for an extra £20 mm. pound or extra £10. Pound. I mean, like I said, I've only ever played for one club. Yeah. Um, there's a number of really good clubs across the country coming to mind. Um, the ones that, that we always emulated to be like was, was um, Drum Chapel was, was a great club. Uh, Ormsby yeah. is a great club. Um, Edinburgh was, was for many years a good club. So, so clubs like that, they just don't really exist anymore. I don't, I don't know why, but where, where you've got you know, really high-class players with beginners mm -hmm. and creating a real family environment. But it's something that I try to do with, with the Greenhouse Centre that I run. There's normally 20 tables in here. At the moment, it's a food bank for, for Westminster. Um, so we're missing a little bit of our table tennis. But yeah, I mean, it, look, if you play table tennis, you want to you normally want to play with people that you like and you want to be a nice environment. So, so yeah, I mean, definitely. Hope, hope, hopefully, Ashley, in answer to your question, yes, there will be. But, it, but it's, it's, it's down to good people to make um, a, good vet, a good club and a good home. So it needs a lot more than just one person. You need five, six, seven. Parents yeah. are incredibly important. Volunteers, I mean, yeah. But yes, yeah. in short, we'll do it together if you like. Yeah, great answer. So uh, the Pong... Pandemic, Karen. I always say his name wrong, so apologies. He says, Coach Karen is Jason. Yeah, I'm glad you got it right. <laughs> Hopeless. I think I got your surname wrong as well. Oh, well I, I, get it wrong. I get it wrong. I still don't know what it is. <laughs> what is it, by the way? Dugru. Oh, I was close. Yes. A bit, a bit off, but. Um, Shukru, yeah. Shukru in Irish. If you say it in Irish, it's Shukru. Oh, uh, okay. Exactly. So, so Sugru is fine. So, yeah. Yeah. I had a good go anyway, but Danny, well. Danny has put best personal achievement as a coach, you know, because that's... Um, that's a very tough question. Like I said, I've coached mm -hmm. hundreds of young, young people who have gone on to become internationals. Ross Wilson, who's now an, uh, a world champion, Paralympic champion, I coached when he was a young boy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I coached Tintin, Maria, you've had them on the show. Oh, so wow. I've, I've coached okay. quite, quite a few players. Probably the highlight for me... Um, was it's a really tough question there's, there's there's a lot some of some of just the relationships with the young people actually i could talk about winning titles but that you know they they gather dust it's probably more <laughs> sort of helping change young people's lives and using table tennis to help them learn about resilience and becoming more independent is probably my highlight and uh, i'm very fortunate i have lots of people that i've worked with still keep in touch with me and and drop me a nice message every now and then 
and uh, they tend to come at good times as well when I might be struggling. So. Oh, that's really nice. Um, someone else has um, asked, I think it's BZ Table Tennis Fitness, they put, I achieved my f level one coaching qualification at the venue in December last year. Very good centre, so I just thought I'd pass that on, so I really enjoy it. Um, and then he's asked, how was your experience coaching? Uh, can't say his name, Kieran. I'm going to call him Kieran, rename him. Karen, is it Karen? Karen, Karen yeah. It sounds so like Karen. Yeah, he... <laughs> He, he comes over to London from time to time and gives me a bit of a hard time. He's, he's a good lad, really good lad. He's, yeah. He's Are you good at trick shots? Much better at trick shots than he is at, at his forehand tops, but I can assure you of that. He might tell you different. But, um, yeah, no, he's, he's a good lad. I really like working with him when he's in town. So, so he comes along here quite often. And we've done a few morning, very early morning sessions because he's, he's a busy man. So he gets me out of bed and we come and hit some ping pong balls real early. Yeah, I know he does a few trick shots, but um, there's a few people saying they're very proud to be part of the G8, um, GH uh, Centre family. And um, yeah, a few lovely messages. Uh, Jason, I honestly respect you of what you're doing by helping others get food from the food banks if they're missing or can't buy food. Yeah, so it's, you, we get the vibe that you, you just want to help other people's people. Sorry, uh, just reading a few other questions there. So, you know, just moving. F okay, so how do you feel coaching me and not making me a world champion? Who's that? <laughs> That's the same guy. <laughs> yes. He's telling me he can be a world champion in his sleep. That's all he needs to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and then he's joking about the time you wake him up. So that's fantastic. Well, we've got a, another question here from Dario from Italy. So you've got fans over there. So what is the longest you've gone without sleep and why? <laughs> the longest without sleep and why? That's a very good question. Um, probably uh, when we first opened this centre. Um, I wasn't okay. getting much, wasn't getting much sleep. It, 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 all in all, with the buying the building and renovating it, and it's a Grade Two star listed building. Mm -hmm. um, it cost about fifteen million pound, and I and I know the guy that that, that funded it. Oh, um, wow. And and I was asked to to look after it and and build it up, and and that's given me a few sleeps. Oh, I can imagine. I can so that, imagine. That's the best answer I can give him. Oh, uh, Ryan Jenkins, he's just joined. He's put fancy the. That's Jay. So, what do you think to that? Uh, I've just qualified now, and I so, so I'm thinking about getting my bet out. As actually, that think this this lockdown is making people think crazy things. I've started to think about playing again, which is is really really um, uh, mad because I haven't played for a good while. But uh, I'm looking forward to to hitting a few balls and getting back in shape. It's my favourite way to exercise. Actually, um, playing table tennis is is uh, and it's just incredibly. Um, energizing for me i get a lot of energy from playing and practicing i don't really like playing yeah. games anymore but but i could practice for, for for fun i really do like it and it gives me a lot of energy yeah and you, you're getting loads of um lovely messages which you're probably seeing through the feeds you know no Jason. questions they don't want to ask me questions they just keep i know there's a lot of compliments to you to be honest it's really nice to see um let's not forget when i beat you one set when you gave me an eight point head start <laughs> Well, yeah, just remember you gave me a head start. Uh, Who's that one? <laughs> the Pong pandemic. Oh, and then uh, there was a question. Away, Say again, sorry. He doesn't want to go away, Karen. He wants to harass me. I know, he does tonight, doesn't he? Um, he, wants, he wants me on his show. He, 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 I think he blew me out to someone more important, I think. Oh, that is just shocking. <laughs> um, <laughs> the big shot table tennis. Um, has any players you've coached had a similar playing style to you? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, yeah, I, I suppose I, I have systems and, 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 and processes that I like table tennis play. I like, I, I like everyone to be hard to beat normally. Mm -hmm. I like them to be, you know, um, able to control the table tennis ball really well. So that's something that I always try and instill in the players I coach. Um, but I, wasn't, um, I didn't have massive weapons. I was a bit of an all-rounder. Mm -hmm. So all the players I try and coach, I always try to give them one sort of main weapon. Mm. So actually, I'd probably coach a little bit away from some of the stuff that I would like to have. So I try and instill that in others, some of the stuff that I would need. But, but keeping those core values of, of being really difficult to beat and having a, having a real good fighting mentality. So, so those things are, are never too far away from the players I work with. Brilliant. Um, so we've got another question here. I think it's Mama Suggs. 
Um, so Jay, who is the next star player on your watch list? Oh, you know, the one thing I've learned actually coaching for so long and having so many players that I've worked with is actually people in, in everything, people learn at different times, different yeah. speeds. So, mm -hmm. so I would never like to pick anyone out really. The thing, the thing that I, I value uh, as a coach and I think we should all value is just people voting with their feet to get into the practice hall and the training hall. And mm. um, as, long as, as long as they're doing that, then, then everyone's got a real good chance. You know, it's, it's a skill-based sport. The more you practice, the, 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 the higher your skill level, hopefully. And then there's different factors around, um, you know, your mental approach, nutrition, um, mm. fitness. Uh, there's so many, t t table tennis is the greatest game, but one of the most difficult games in the world to play. Yeah, uh, I think if people turn around and say they can spot a champion, then then they should bottle that and sell it because because it's it's so difficult and and uh, it's you know it's an emotional game as well. We, people don't tend to talk about the emotion in table tennis. You know, you you sort of nine foot away from each other and you can see the whites of the eyes and and in that mm -hmm. heat of battle you can you can hear their breath, you can see their hand shaking. It, you know, it's it really is far more um, aggressive than people think. So. So I think, uh, yeah, in answer to that, that, that's probably the way I think about table tennis, the way I feel about it is, 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 is along those lines. No, it's a great answer. So someone's just asking, when is the centre reopening, coach? So when is it to... reopening? Yeah. So we're doing uh, hopefully some mentoring sessions, so not physical activity. That all depends on when the government let us know that we can start to do activity inside. Uh, as soon mm. as as soon as that um, happens, we've got a mezzanine floor here in the centre. You can probably just see it in the background. Uh, we, we're going to have six tables up there. Uh, the short answer is we will be able to go from the 15th of June. That's oh, fantastic. When we'll have, that's when we'll have everything in place. But we're obviously dependent on government guidelines. So once yeah. we get that information, then we can move forward. If we're not able to do inside sport by the 16th, by the 15th of June, we're hopeful to do some mentoring sessions with our young people to, to, um, because we coach mostly young people, is to, to make sure that they're, they're mentally uh, ready and in a good place for when we do start back some kind of normal life, whatever that looks like. No, that was a great answer. So, uh, someone's just asked, what could the Harrow and Wembley Table Tennis League do better? Yeah, my probably my pet hate about table tennis um, is the length of time. That, that matches take to play. Yeah. Uh, as table tennis players, we tend to go and practice for like an hour, an hour and a half. Yeah. But tournaments last a full day and you maybe don't even play an hour and a half's worth of table tennis. Um, mm -hmm. And pretty similar to the local leagues. You know, you play in a local league, it's three on mm -hmm. three. They're a little bit pedestrian. I think, pedestrian is probably not the right word. I think we can modernise um, local league table tennis to make it maybe two in a team. Mm. Um, a little bit shorter, uh, two singles and a doubles like the Davis Cup, I think would be a really good way for, for most leagues to go. Um, we, young people need to play in, in local league as well as old people. And mm. the sport belongs to all table tennis players. So I think you need to be able to cater for all. And if, if matches are starting at half seven, quarter to eight, mm. and quite often going on to 11, 11, 30, it's no good for anyone really. I mean, you know, you've all got work the next day. But I can understand the people that play table tennis for socially, that might be their one release of the week. So they quite enjoy being out and being with their teammates. So, so it, it's not an easy one to answer, but maybe having um, a slightly more progressive end. So when you've got people that really want to move forward and develop, mm -hmm. that you just play a two-man league rather than a three-man league. Okay, thanks for that answer. So uh, uh, is it Mama Suggs? I don't know if you know them, possibly you do, but they say Sam says, Uncle Jay, when can you teach me to play? I want to beat Daddy. So uh, <laughs> any simple tips? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, yeah, just perseverance. Keep practising. Keep mm. practising and, and a bit of trash talking from time to time is always good when you're playing family members. Happy days. Good answer. Um, someone's just asked, um, how can we help raise the profile of table tennis? I guess things like this and... Yeah, uh, I mean, table tennis is, is never going to be, um, it's never going to get the TV coverage that, that uh, other sports might. I mean, the only way I could see table tennis really getting some, some really top coverage is if the prize money was astronomical, a bit like mm -hmm. snooker. I mean, 
I'll probably get in trouble for this, but not many people can tell me that snooker is overly exciting to watch. But I don't mind watching the final when I know there's a hundred grand on it, or there's, you know, I can get mm. I, and I can appreciate the skill in it. Um, but but table tennis, uh, the amount of spin that's involved, it's difficult. You know, the best players in the world struggle to to block a ball mm. or return a serve, or or the ad, the average length at the last World Championship when they measured a tournament. The, rally length but the best players in the world is 2.7 mm. shots in the world championships i mean that means that we're, we're watching mostly one or two balls the whole time it's not particularly exciting unless you know what's on the ball they could mm. there's lots of gimmicks you could try you could color a ball in half so people can understand the spin mm. you could make it a little bit more like the darts and a razzmatazzi if you wanted i think I, you know they changed from 21 down to 11 i think that was a great move um, Why do you think that then? Because I just think more critical points quicker, so so the underdogs have more chance of winning. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't come to fruition in that in that in probably mm. that way. Um, I like the idea of sudden death at, at ten all and stuff like that. That would be more fun. Um, just ways, yeah, just ways that make more critical points because that's what people want to watch. You know, you, when you're you mm. know if you're watching a tennis match, you, you'll watch it and you're not really so interested in the first couple of games. You know, yeah. two one one or. But as soon as you get towards the business end at sort of four all, five all, six all mm. tie break, you, you very rarely get up to go and make yourself a cup of tea at that point. You, you'll, you'll watch to the end. So. Yeah, definitely. So I think critical points are an important part of, of, of what table tennis needs to create. And the 11 up was good, but maybe mm. even just best of three, you know, mm. just best of three. And, and if the last set does go to the last set, it's eight all. So, it's, uh, I mean, it's like that would be, so it's short and sharp games, but, but I think it'd be more entertaining. But I'm not sure the players would want to do that. And, and things have changed, you know. I mean, when I was growing up, I, played, I was lucky enough to play in the Manchester World Championships and the tournament lasted two weeks. And players were playing multiple matches a day. Uh, Voldner won that World Championships in Manchester in 97. Um, he was unbeaten. He didn't drop a set in the singles, but he lost to, to everyone in the, in the team event. I think I wouldn't have a chance against him. So, um, so uh, yeah, so it's just the way the game has changed. Um, I think we need to think about how we can market it a little bit better rather than having these long, slow tournaments and matches to watch. I just don't think there's, you know, it, it's, it's difficult. For football, you go, you watch 90 minutes. You, you know, if you're on the way home, you can have a pint with your mates, you can talk about it. It's half a day. Table tennis, you go and watch a local league match and your whole night's gone and you've got to travel to wherever you've got to go to. So let alone going and watching high-level table tennis. Mm -hmm. Difficult. That's the challenge that we all have to... To contribute to so so I would I would make games shorter, more critical points, mm. um, and see how we go from there. Really, no, no, um, great insight, great answer. You know, some I think I went to the national championships in two thousand seventeen. That was quite good the way they welcomed the players and things like that. And that was yeah, good too. Some, yeah, good stuff. Yeah, they've done some really good stuff. Like when you walk out now and they call yes. the names, players names on the back of their shirts. There they are. There's some really good. Yeah, names definitely. Coaches. But, but I do think having more critical points and short points. I mean, if you're trying to, if you're trying to make it, get it more exposure, you have to know that the people that are watching aren't going to know so much about the game. That's true. So therefore, they're, 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 not going to, they're not going to be so interested in most of the detail that as table tennis players, we might be interested in, mm. you know, and slowing the game down, speeding the game up. They're not going to probably notice half of the stuff that we might notice. Yeah. You know, when, when, when they take a timeout, why they take a timeout. We can see pressure as people that watch table tennis Mm. So, so yeah, so I think I think that those are all, all really good things that they're doing in terms of the way we, we, we sort of present the sport. But we could do it more, you know, music at events. Table tennis still has the reputation that if someone rustles a crisp packet in the corner, everyone's going to lose their mind. So, so I think we need to do a little bit around that. No, interesting comments. So someone's just put, have you ever been involved with coaching university table tennis teams? No, actually, I haven't. But... Um, uh, we the centre uh, being in central London, it's in Marlebone, so I mean it couldn't be couldn't be any more central. It's right around the corner mm. from Marlebone Station, literally a hundred yards. Um, so the university, one of, uh, which who, who plays here? I can't remember who plays here now. Come to me in a minute. But they practice here two times a week, and they play the, the university varsity matches here. Mm. So I watch a little bit. Kelshin Verasinghe comes in and plays some matches. Uh, so um, it's, it's yeah I, I've never coached a team but 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 we have some some teams come here quite often and play on the Wednesdays and then two nights a week training yeah it's a link sport I don't know if you're in touch with them but they said that was a great tournament in Manchester Wills with you Jason remember that really well so that's interesting and three, um, three of my former teammates have actually um just 
Link, uh, Link Sports. Uh, they've just created this um, really wonderful app, actually. It's worth mm -hmm. everyone having a look at it and, and following. Um, they're trying to connect people uh, through sports. So if you don't have a, a practice partner, you don't have a partner to play tennis with or golf with, uh, I think this is the principle. They'll probably tell me off if I've got it wrong. But, I um, think you're right. But then, yeah, they, they, you can touch base with people and find yourself a partner and, and meet up and, try, and, uh, and hit a few balls or, or play a bit of golf, whatever it is that you're interested in. So it's so a really good idea. So three of my former teammates, uh, two of them I used to beat very comfortably and one of them I've never beat. I, I won't tell you who's who, but um, oh, okay. it's the ugliest one I couldn't beat. It's, it's... <laughs> we'll, see. we'll see what they have to say about that. Um, but um, obviously we had um, the three topics, but I'll just jump to number three. Cause someone's just asked, what are your thoughts on changing the colours of rubbers? You know, and then I'll just go back to the... Uh... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's, it's tr they're trying to make it more interesting. They're trying to make it more appealing. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure how pink and orange and purple rubbers might mm. entice kids to play longer. I think we've got bigger issues than that. But, but I don't... I, mm. For me, it's not really a problem. I'm not... A, I, I'm really open to anything that, that improves our game and helps us improve and develop. So, so I, I, I think it's not, it's not really a big thing. I don't, I don't know if it will take on. I mean, I can't imagine me wanting to look at a yellow or pink rubber on my back. I, I think it might take me some time to get used to it, but I'm not against it. I think, it, I think, it, mm. I think it, anything that, that would excite more people to play, we should always investigate and try. Yeah, no, I totally agree. So um, with that, you know, you obviously spoke about sort of the tactics and understanding styles, you know, pimples and variation of that. So what are your thoughts on that? You know, because we have a lot of beginners, so you know, what's your advice to them? Or is one, it... one of my one of my favourite subjects actually is is um, is uh, I've often played with teammates who found it really difficult to play against combination bats. Mm. Uh, I was lucky enough to grow up with with some good players in my club who used combination bats. The O'Leary brothers were family uh, uh, famous in in Northwest London, and they they all played long pimples on the back end and had mm. really, really big booming forehands. So so you learn to try and try and use the pimples against them actually because the booming forehands was, was the thing to, to, to keep away from. So, so there's, there's lots of different, I mean, table tennis is great firstly because equipment can, can sort of level the playing field for, for mm. physical differences, which I think is really good in any sport actually. So, so we're lucky enough to have a sport where equipment can, can, can improve players and give them, a, give them a chance to play against players that might be slightly better. Uh, some people have the, the, the mindset that it's cheating or you've heard all these things, and I'm sure at local league level, but it's in, incredibly skillful, you know, short, uh, I mean, in the characteristics of the two major types of rubber, there are combination bats, is short pimples, um, mm. who Matthias Carlsberg uh, from Sweden is using now at the moment, um, mm. and he got to the final of the World Championship not so long ago, men's singles, uh, mm. really flat, very, very good with the new plastic ball. Uh, staying close to the table, hammering that plastic ball, it's really difficult to play against. Um, so the short pimple seems to be having more effect uh, with the new plastic ball. Um, long pimples actually don't seem to be having so much of an effect. But then you've got, I think, the girl from India who won the Commonwealth medal a couple of years ago. Uh, Manika? Manika, is it? I forgot her name. I should, I should remember it. Yeah, Manika. She uses long pimples on the backhand and again, quite devastating mm. forehand. Um, similar to the O'Leary brothers. She won't like me for saying that. I'm sure, I'm sure they will. Um, but yeah, so the, it, pimples are great. You know, I think it's a brilliant thing that, that levels the playing field. Incredibly difficult to play with. So if someone's using a combination bat, you have to see that as somebody who really has to have a decent level of skill to understand yeah. spin in the same way that you have to understand spin to play against it. So long pimples is, uh, in a polite way, the best way I can describe it, it's a little bit like a parasite. So it needs something, it needs to feed off of what you give it. It needs to suck the blood of whatever you're giving it. So if you're playing with a lot of spin, then pimples can become quite difficult to play against. Mm -hmm. If you give it no spin, long pimples, it can't generate its own spin. So therefore you have to think about how you can use spin. So, so we talked about table tennis being a really high level skill development sport and, and mm -hmm. not only in your physicality, but in, your, in, your, in the quickness of your mind. So you have to be really quick and agile in your mind when you're playing to make better decisions, to understand and to learn as the game is going on. So, so pimples, yeah, are, are very effective. Uh, mm. help, can help you if you're slightly not as mobile. I would definitely recommend using some kind of long pimple to help, okay. to help you nullify 
if, if you're not so well at, at, at moving, like I say, you could cover one half of the table pretty well. And there's different types of pimples that will give you more of an advantage. Um, short pimples, I think you have to be more physically, uh, you probably have to have a higher physicality in terms of to, to play with short pimples. You really have to have really fast racket speed to hit the ball, to, to make a good connection. And you can get some spin with short pimples. So, okay. so I, think, I think I would, you know, if you, if you struggle to develop much top spin, then maybe going down the short pimples route is a good one for you. Mm. If, if you can generate good top spin, then, then I would play with reverse rubbers. But, but generally, yeah, if you're less mobile, I might build a game for somebody who can use long pimples to slow the game down and manipulate the ball a bit better. If I've got someone short who really struggles to, to develop top spin, I might use short pimples, um, like I said, uh, to, to, help, to help flatten out the mm -hmm. ball a little bit and give you more, more chance of, of, of winning if you're going to play a flat game. Because playing flat game with, with, um, with reverse rubbers, when it's backspin on the ball, obviously the tackiness of the, of the rubber is going to impact on the ball. So backspin will become more difficult to play a flat game with. So pimples kind of nullifies that spin a little bit, short pimples, because it's they're almost frictionless. They have a, a lower friction level. So, so oh, that's okay. combination bats and how they work. But if, if anyone ever really wants a little bit more information on that, um, they can always contact me on here and, and ask me some questions because it, there's a lot more complexities to it. But I don't want to, I don't want to go into too much of all of it. But, but I, those are the basic principles to think about when, when you talk about combination bets. Well, thank you for that because that's a great insight. And um, you know, if anyone does want to get in touch with Jason and obviously um, do what he says, just get in touch with him and he'll help you out. So thank you for that. Um, so obviously, if we go back to topic number one. I know we've done it in a bit of a random order. No um, so it says building your game. Um, so, so for our players, obviously we get a lot that start off, and even myself, I started early in 2014 as a social player, and there's many of us like that, and we're trying to aim to play for the army team, and you know, struggling and stuff like that. So, how do you build your game so you can compete for places to represent the army, or if it's just a civvy tennis club? So, building your game in table tennis is, is knowing yourself is incredibly important before actually you can start to, to really think about how you want to go. You should have some idea of how you want to play. So, my first advice would be to pick someone that you would like to model yourself on, but you've got to find a way of keeping it realistic. So, uh, yeah. I'd probably, I want to play like Ma Long, but I'd probably end up playing more like Ma Rong. So, <laughs> yeah. so it's important that my, I keep my, my, um, my ambitions realistic. Um, yeah. And then have some basic fundamentals. So if I wanted to be attacking player, mm. whenever I serve, I should be looking to attack. That's like mm. part one. So service should be followed by attack if I want to be an attacking player. Mm. So that's one basic principle that I can learn from uh, and start building my game around. Then I practice my serve, obviously, and then opening up. And you want to, we spoke earlier, you know, the average length of table tennis rallies is 2.7 at the highest level. So you don't have to, you know, you don't have to play 30, 40 shots to win a rally if you're going to be an attacking player. You need to have a really good service need to be able to get the ball out from the table. And what I mean by that is, that, you know, if you're able to generate enough spin so that the ball is always coming along, then you're able to attack as often as you like. And that's a real, that's a real basic way of starting to build your game. And then equally, if you're a defensive player and you want to get more backspin in the game, then you want to tighten the game up. So you play slightly shorter, more, maybe more balls, and then try to manipulate with more mm. spin. Again, it, your physicality is incredibly important when you're thinking about building your game. You, your body shape is important, your, your height, uh, mm -hmm. your level of, of, of flexibility uh, is, is important. So you can w learn what, how you're going to play and where you're going to play. And, and um, uh, I, I would, I would, what I would do is actually, if I was in a, a playing hall, is, is never be frightened to use your teammates. You know, what, what, do you think of, what do you think of my game? What do you think I can improve? Mm -hmm. Because often our perceptions of ourselves are different to the realities. Um, I remember uh, being in a tournament, um, I think it was in Belfast, actually. And, uh, and this was in particular one of, the, one of the moments in my life when a sort of light bulb went off. And I just lost, uh, I think, to Alan Cook, I think, in the semifinals of, 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 of Grand Prix. And I had a chance to win and didn't quite take it at the business end of the game. And uh, I was in the changing room and a coach, one of the coaches that was, was working with the England team at that time, and he said to me, you know, you see, you were close, but the problem is you don't have one weapon. You don't have something that you've built your game around. You've got lots of good components, but there's no scary component. Mm. And I said, well, how do I do that? 
and yeah, just, you know, that's, that's my feedback for you. I don't know how you do it, but you just, I, that's what you've got to think about. But but then it was a light bulb. So then I worked on, I worked on flicking quite a lot, so to becoming a really good flicker of the table tennis ball, um, so that I could I could get into rallies quicker because actually I didn't really like touch to touch. I, you know, I didn't really like being in and out of the table. I had to get out and then be quite quick over the table, just off the table. So I worked out flicking was important. So so. Yeah, learning from your peers is incredibly important. Um, Visualising how you want to play and then starting to build your game around that. So if you want to be a defender, obviously, uh, mm -hmm. think about defending more generating spin. If you want to be an attacker, try and have some basic principles around service must be followed by attack where possible. So you need to work on your service and work on your open up. You also then need to think about if you're an all-out attacker, not to always attack. Because if you're always attacking, then your, your, your opponent has an advantage because they know what's coming, so they can try and tie you down. So you have to think about that. So yeah, there's there's lots of components. I'm very happy to help anybody if they want to want to come down and, and hit some balls at our centre. They're always welcome, and oh, that's very I, kind. Help, I can help people um, uh, think about their game a little bit more. Uh, like I said, I've, I've had a, you know a good few decades in the game, so so I can see things and maybe give tips. And it's difficult just to turn and say, well, you should be this way, or you should be that way. It's about explaining the process for people. But, but service followed by attack for attackers. If you're going to be a defensive type player, think about working on spin, controlling the ball much more. Um, if, you're, if you're very tall, it's very likely that you're going to need to play from the table tennis table, a couple of feet away from the table tennis table. If you're shorter, Harimoto, you're able to stay closer to the table mm -hmm. tennis table. So it's just thinking about your physicality as well and how that influences the decisions you make when you play. Yeah, no, that's very interesting insight. And... Um... Yeah, because we, I've noticed there's only not that many defensive players. A majority are attack, aren't they? And funnily enough, the guy that is a defensive player is quite tall. So, uh, yeah, it's quite interesting to see because a lot of players aren't very tall, that I've noticed. Um, but, yeah, that's really useful tips. So, thank you for that. So, um, like, um, Having chatted to what you've just said is a really good point. Chatting to other members of the team and things like that, I noticed one of them says the mental approach to the game. Sometimes she just falls to pieces. She's got the shots. So, how do you approach the mental side of the game? Is it you know do you have um, a support network, um, a psychologist? Yeah, kind of, I mean, kind of thing. I, mean, I was I was really lucky to when I was a junior. Actually, I played for England. I had a couple of really good. Um, uh, sports psychologist mm. probably did more psychology with me than sports psychology if I'm honest but yeah but uh, that probably tells you it was a little bit more difficult when I was a younger player to, to control my emotions and, and uh, maybe be a little bit more level I found quite difficult um but it, it's an interesting it's an interesting thing I spoke earlier about table tennis being an incredibly emotional sport and it really is I mean there's nothing like it you can get so frustrated when you make some errors um, that you really give yourself a hard time and then all of the memories of all of your bad losses or playing bad mm -hmm. comes into the front of your mind and then before you know it, you, you, you fall apart. You, you, you're like you know, a digestive biscuit crumbling, you know. Yeah. It, it's really, really difficult to, to do that. My, my advice is, is, is really quite simple. It's to try and practice with a bit of pressure and a bit of fun. I just mm -hmm. spoke about the importance of your teammates. Um, one of the things that's important, Ashley spoke about earlier, uh, you know, will you ever create a, another vibe like that? The thing that was great about our, uh, the environment we created was it was incredibly competitive and everybody wanted to win. You know, you would fight, you know, tooth and nail to, 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 mm -hmm. really, to really win. But it was, it was a positive environment. You know, we'd be egging each other on, good shot, well played, too good for me today, you know, mm -hmm. and creating this kind of buzz within a room that helps you sort of become comfortable that, you know, people can hit good shots. I can make mistakes. So it's about creating that type of environment. Um, if you're feeling pressured, try to work out why you're feeling pressured. Mm -hmm. Is the pressure um, from your teammates? Is the pressure from your parents? Is the pressure financial? Is the pressure time-based? Because maybe you're, you're giving up time to do this, mm -hmm. you know, table tennis rather than being with your loved ones or whatever it is that, oh, excuse me, whatever it is that, that you're looking for, work mm -hmm. out where that kind of pressure comes from. And then when you, when you kind of think you've narrowed it down to what it is, embrace it. Like, I always, you know, I remember growing up and going to tournaments and, you know, you'd ask your teammates who you know have been practicing really hard, how are you, mate, how's it going? The first thing anyone says is, oh, I haven't played for three weeks. You know, and, and, and it's like, I don't, know what, I don't know why people do it. It's like this way of a, a mechanism of trying to downplay. I think we should do the opposite. We should turn and say, I'm really looking forward to today. 
I've practised twice in the last week, which is good for me because I've had some difficulties going on. And I think I'm going to play all right today. And I think it's about, you know, yeah. building yourself up rather than making excuses before, before, we, before we play. That's very so, good advice, yeah, because we yeah. do that a lot, don't we? We sort of... Uh, we really do. And, and, yeah. and, and we think of the, the negatives far more. Yes. You know, you miss a shot and you give yourself... I, I often explain it to when I'm coaching young people. I see them hit a good shot and it's like nothing happens. Like they just, you know, they're, they're like, oh, I'm, I'm, I do that every time. And then they miss a shot and then they moan like it's high heaven. Yeah. And I'm like, I've got no problem with you moaning. You can moan all day. You can moan for yeah. many hours. But when you hit a good one, at least smile then. Because yeah. at least I want an equal balance of your emotions. I don't want somebody who never celebrates success but then moans the whole time when things go wrong. We mm -hmm. have to get that balance right. And that's what I spoke about earlier, the environment. You know, don't, don't, fear of failure, it can, can, can paralyze us. Yeah. Right? Uh, fear of victory can paralyze us. Mm -hmm. so you get close to beating someone you've never beat before, you start thinking you've won. And then before you know it, you've given away a lead that you should never have given away and you can't work mm -hmm. out how you managed to get yourself eight, four up and then lose a game, game eight. And it's in the blink of your eye. So create an environment where you apply pressure to yourself. Set drills with a number of shots in them. Mm. Do service exercises where you set yourself a pressure target. So not just one service. For instance, say you wanted to get the second bounce on the end white line. Say you've got to do five in a row before, mm. before you, can, um, you, know, you can finish your practice. And if you do that, when you get to three or four, you're going to feel the nerves. So if you're doing service practice, you're going to feel that nerves because to get that fifth one landing on the white line is quite difficult. Mm. So it's about creating these little environments where you have this fear of failure, um, a little bit of pressure from yourself. And, and, and I probably the last bit of advice I'd give anyone about, about, about the mental side is, is if you win, you don't become a millionaire. And if you lose, you don't die. Yeah, exactly. You get up, yeah. you get up tomorrow and you can try again. You know? So... Yeah. So really just give it all you've got. Leave the court feeling like you've, you've had a good experience and you've put it all in. And the results will look after themselves. Like they'll, they'll come when they need to come. Yeah. No, Charlotte Carey's just joined, which is nice. And um, the vibe I've got from everyone that I've chatted to is just to enjoy it and just um, enjoy what you do. And, yeah, just try and focus one ball at a time, basically. Yeah, just... privilege, is a, privilege is a pressure. Sorry, other yeah. way around. Pressure, pressure is a privilege. It really yeah. is. It really, yeah. That's how you've got to think of it. How, how good is it that you can get yourself into a situation where you feel nervous? Mm. I mean, that's, that's incredible. You know, you're yeah. about to, it's nine all or eight all and, you get, and you're actually nervous. I mean, sport is one of the only things in life that lets you do that other than maybe exams a little bit. And, but they're a bit, mm. it's a bit more prolonged. You know, you'll have that build up to an exam and you might sit there for, for a couple of hours. But, but table tennis, you can get that feeling. Nearly, nearly every 20 minutes. It's, it's quite a good one to have. Yeah, definitely. So um, just in case I missed it or some of our audience missed it, so did you do other sports when you were growing up or was it always table tennis? You did your family play or how did you get involved? So, yeah, my, 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 my father um, played quite a bit and was quite a, quite a good hobby table tennis player. Um, and he started up his own club, which went on to become London Progress, which is the club we spoke about earlier, that won 10 Premier League titles in a row. Yes. So that's how we all played. My brothers were quite good, both county champions. Um, I, I, yeah, I'd play any sport. I mean, I, I never went, I, I can't sit still. I still can't sit still. So you probably notice I'm jumping around the place. Um, football, I, you know, I was half decent at. Uh, yeah, I played every sport. Badminton, can play mm -hmm. a little bit. I uh, played for my school in nearly every every sport. I uh, played for my staff football team. I played for our school staff football team when I was in the later years of school. So, so um, yeah, so it, it's important to play other sports, actually. I think it's really important, especially when you're growing up and it teaches you to, to choose the one that you, that you want to play as you grow up. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the reason why I probably chose table tennis, actually, is because uh, when I was younger, I was quite a sore loser and I hated playing team games where... I felt like I played okay and we'd still lost. I just couldn't fathom that. It used to be oh, okay. my head. Or, 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 you know, someone's had a, you know, the, the, the teammates are moaning all the time. I just like, it's just not, I like to be in control of my, my destiny, if that makes sense. As oh, okay. So, Interesting. So I, I like table tennis because if I won or lost or ultimately it was down to me, there's, there's, I couldn't blame anybody else. I didn't have anybody else to blame, which is, which is, which is good. Not the coach. <laughs> Joking. No, 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 no
I never let coaches fall. <laughs> um, so out of table tennis, which do you prefer the most, doubles or singles? Or like, was it, did you say singles? I'm getting the vibe, it's singles, or have I got it wrong? Tough, it's a tough one. Um, team events, that's, but singles, but team events. So there might be doubles involved in it, but, but I'm, I far more prefer, well, as a junior, I played for England, actually, and it wasn't a great experience. Mm. I didn't really like the England coaching setup. I still think it's not as good as it could be. I think, I think, okay. there's, way too, I think there's way too much pressure on the young players um, mm. to, to win at a level that actually in the grand scale of life doesn't really matter. You know, if you're, if you're the best player in Europe at 14, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be the best player in Europe when you're an adult, when it really should be what you're mm. playing for. So it's important development pathways and steps. But I, yeah, as a, as a young person, I never really enjoyed playing for England. I didn't enjoy the the environment that it created as a senior. I then went to play for Ireland. I just absolutely loved it. I loved playing for my own club progress because of my teammates, because of the, the journey and the, and the, and the, yeah, the, the camaraderie. And, and uh, I think that's, if I was to pick, I would probably say a, a team event over a singles event. So when they split the world championships, it was probably bad news for me because um, they, they used to have the team event and the singles together. And then they, okay. separate, they separated them so that the team events one year and the singles is, is another. Uh, okay. and, and, I, and, and if you said to me, which one do you want to play? I would skip the singles and play the team if I could, actually. Uh, okay. I, I love being in the team environment. Oh, that's interesting. So um, who would you say is your favourite player on the tour right now? I can't remember if I asked that. I'm having a moment this evening. I don't think, I don't think <laughs> My favourite player right now oh, is probably probably still Ma Long. I think he's the greatest player that's ever played mm. this game. Um, you know, there's lots of different arguments around who's the best player ever. For me, he's the best player ever because he's the most consistent and he's yeah. won so many things. To be, to be as consistent as he was, was almost like what Desmond Douglas was when we were growing up in this country and we didn't lose to an English player or a British player for, for 10 or 11 years. I think Ma Long didn't lose to an international table tennis player for something like two years. Yeah, and okay. that's just a frightening thought when you think how many professional table tennis players and he wasn't like he was ducking out of competitions he was playing in everything so yeah so probably prob probably mile long oh, okay so we've got Tintin joining now so uh, nice to see you Tintin thanks for joining um they're all joining tonight <laughs> um so I, we got this question um I think it was to Liam Pitchford actually so I'm going to uh I'm going to uh, ask this one to you so if you could go back to your to your younger self, is there one thing that you would change if you could? It's a really good question. Uh, That's what he that, said. Because <laughs> that implies that I don't like where I am right now. Not necessarily. It just means you might just change one slight thing. <laughs> yeah, but then, but then changing one small thing opens different doors, you see? Okay. So uh, for me, if I could, one thing would I have changed? Oh, it's a tough one. It really is a tough mm. one. It's getting you thinking. Um, while you're I, thinking... I, 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 might, I, I might have advised myself to deal with my junior experience with England in a different way. I might have... I, might have, I didn't have much... Uh, you know, I, I'm quite a big family. and I, I, My father, the one that started off the table tennis, passed away when I was mm. like 12. So, yeah, sorry to so I used to go to table tennis tournaments on my own from the age of 12. Mm. Um, I didn't have much of a support network, which which actually I didn't really need. But, but when we would go away on international mm. trips, I felt like that's where I lost out. So I felt like I would go away on international trips. And, I, and at the time, I might have been number one or number two, um, probably two, if I'm honest. Uh, but the three and four would often get picked ahead of me. And I felt like I, I had no one in my corner. So I had no champion. So I might have turned around and, 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 and told myself to, to maybe be a little bit different, maybe not be so angry when things didn't quite go my way or or maybe be a bit more vocal in a more positive way oh okay that'd be it okay just find my other notes just bear with me one moment <laughs> no um so i'm gonna do some fun questions now Good. um so i asked this to the other stars as well and uh, their reactions were quite good but who is your superhero <laughs> oh it's a good question my mum Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's a lovely answer. A few people have said that one. Um, do you have any fears or phobias? See, snakes. 
No spiders. Heights. Heights is a problem for me. When I was really? yeah, when I was a, a young boy, I uh, was being chased by a dog. We were playing a game you're not supposed to play um, in some some flats in London, and uh, some of the bigger boys are a bit quicker than me. Knocked on the door, they weren't supposed to knock on, and the owner let out his his Alsatian. So, so I had to jump off a balcony and ended up putting my arm through a Luke, glass Lucas egg bottle. Ow. But since then, I, I don't really like uh, I don't really like heights since that day. I'm not surprised. Well, the moral of the story is don't play lockdown, Ginger. Lesson learned. <laughs> Every day's a school day. <laughs> um, so for your matches, do you have, did you have, or do you have any mantras or superstitions or anything like that? Yeah, I've got a strange one, actually. People always laugh at me. I love new socks. So I, I would always try okay. and wear new socks. So I put new socks uh, on every really? match. Yeah. I love the feeling of just soft new socks. Nice. Yeah, that. That's it. <laughs> Quite an expensive one to have as well, actually. Brilliant. I love it. So, um, guys, have you got any more questions for Jason? Because we've got about nine minutes left before this live shuts down, which I realised against when I was chatting to Sam Walker. It, it warned me. So, like I say, you're, you're always learning when you're doing these new things. So, yeah, if you've got any more questions... Uh, give it a whirl but it was nice because obviously when we were getting you were getting in touch and we were chatting and um, you mentioned that you were happy to possibly do a training camp for British Army table tennis and I just wonder what you could offer us and we'd gladly take you up on it what are your thoughts on that I'd love to yeah I'd love to come along and help out and play and, 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 and offer some of my advice everything I know about table tennis doesn't belong to me it belongs to everybody every player in the world so and I don't know as much as I'd like to know. So I'm, I'm always keen to learn more and I'm always ready to share what I do know. So, so that's my duty as a coach is to pass on the little bits and pieces I do know. So it might be one or two nuggets and might be a lot of rubbish, who knows? No, I think what I've learned, you know, when I was speaking to Ryan Jenkins and Alison Bro, even yourself and so many others, is that you could, I think all our players could learn from you all. Do you know what I mean? I think you could all give something. I think that's really important. You know, and like you say, we all learn differently, don't we? So, you know, so I think you'd add, um, you know, you'd add, certainly add value to the setup for sure. Someone's just asked, why are you going to become a table tennis ch England tutor? Uh, I, that's added how that asked that question, right? Yeah. That's the head of you. That's the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the guy in charge of coaching and tutoring and coach education for Table Tennis England. Alid, I will get round to my paperwork and my homework very soon. I'm sorry it's taken me so long. <laughs> Managing this place is not as easy as I might like. I'm getting told off on here as well. I like it. <laughs> oh, dear. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that one. <laughs> that's all right. Um, yeah, they caught me out there. Um, Nobody's right any... to ask it. Yeah, so have you got any... Oh, he's laughing, so that's all right. I think he's forgiving you. <laughs> um, so do you have any other comments or anything you'd like to say to people that have watched tonight? Any, anything? No, just, you know, if, if you're a table tennis enthusiast, uh, hopefully you'll get back to the hall sooner rather than later. Um, you know, enjoy your practice. Incredibly important to, to enjoy your practice and find, find new people to play with. Um, Think about the competitions you want to play in and where you want to go to. Uh, make sure you keep, you keep uh, learning and, and enjoying the experience of, of competing. Um, and have some, some, really think about your targets in terms of, of where you want to go and what you want to achieve in the game. Even if you're just a social player, it's mm -hmm. always really important to have a couple of targets. And it might just be beating that person or doing this. But, but keep those at the front of your mind when you're, when you're trying to develop and trying to practice. Mm -hmm. um, and that will help you. If there's parents on here, the one thing I've learned um, from, from, from coaching and watching relationships is the number one thing that's important is your relationship with your child. So don't sacrifice that for, for making them great at any sport. Is, is, really, um, is really think about your relationship with them and find a good quality coach or someone you can trust to help educate them because uh, I've seen way too many relationships um, be sport through, through sport as well as some positive outcomes. There's often mm. quite often... Uh, some quite negative ones, so that's for the parents. And who else is there? For the Army Table Tennis team, uh, what I want to know actually is who, who's the best out the services? So is it, is it the Navy, the Army? It's the, the, Air, the, Force? Army, 
Yeah, unfortunately it's the RAF, but we did get a historic win in 2016 where we got the double. So the ladies team won and I was part of that, you know, privileged to be part of that. And we had, you know, the men did a blinder and they won after 33 year wait. Um, and we lost, the lads lost 6-4 last year. Um, um, you know, great effort. It could have gone either way. And, you know, the... Tony Stead, he's part of the RAF team, he was the spokesman, he even said it could have gone either way and we are closing in and we've just got a new army men's champion so the chances of beating them now, they need to be scared because we're getting training camps, all these coaches like yourself, it's so exciting <laughs> and you know, we, we will get them and the ladies smashed them 10-0 last, you know, last into services so I think the ladies, we've just got to keep the momentum going but the men are closing in and I think they need to be scared. Yes, 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 I like that. <laughs> you know, we're not competitive or anything but to be fair, <laughs> afterwards we all have a good laugh and we all go for drinks together so, you know, we do respect each other but it is competitive. But like Brilliant, said, that's the way it should be. Definitely. Um... But yeah, just, you know, with everything coming up, we've got the World Masters in Japan, you know, we've got hopefully a hungry training camp and things like that, and you guys coming in, you know, potentially three or four coaches add to the team, and we're, the guys are just so excited, because it'll just help get the depth up in the men's team. Brilliant. So, yeah, Brilliant. it's really Brilliant. helped. But um, we've got three minutes to go, so I'll just wrap it up and just do a thank you. So, oh. so... Uh, Oh, okay. So if you can answer these two questions very quickly. So which celebrities have you played with or against? Who was the best? Can you answer that in a couple of seconds? 30 seconds? Uh, best one I played against, uh, Theo Walcott. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Uh, well, okay. I played with but Theo Walcott. Was pretty good. Oh, that is cool. And then someone said, how can we encourage and get more females into the sport? Um, starting them off at a younger age in, in groups. So more group, more group, more more ind uh, individual sessions for girls, and, and and bring them up together for for as teams, rather than just as individuals. And someone's just asked, I would love to get into the sport. Where do I start? Uh, Google table tennis England. Um, find it on there. There's like a, a a club finder. Find your local club, phone them up, and go along to hopefully one of their open sessions they do. Yeah, fantastic and answer. Get anyone in London, you're, you, you once we're uh, up and running everyone's welcome if greenhouse center is open and we do adult table tennis most evenings after 8 p.m so so we're open six days a week and, and uh yeah we're open to the public so if you're interested in, in, in playing table tennis in london it's a pretty special building you can you can look at it online it's uh, an old converted church uh grade two star listed building it's uh, 15 million pound in buying and yeah. renovating and 20 table venues so. yeah so get in touch with jason if you're in that area get in touch in university Nottingham table tennis, yeah. I think Richard Johnson is still playing for the RAF and he's doing quite well. We've literally got a minute and 56 seconds left. So I just want to say thank you guys for all joining and asking a load of questions to Jason. You know, it's been great having you on board and actually you've given a really different insight into this sort of the, one of the interviews I've done. And that's what I've enjoyed about doing them all because you've all given something different. And it's been fantastic. And uh, we obviously invite you to one of our events, you know, just to meet the guys, even have a hit. And, you know, we'll be in touch to organise a training camp with yourself, I think. You know, at a time that suits yourself. That'll be amazing. Yeah. We'll get it going. Yeah, yeah. So thank you for your time tonight. Oh, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, and a lot of people saying thank you, you know, for, um, for tonight as well. And then... <laughs> Ali is giving you a hard time again. <laughs> Did you read it? I missed it. You put now crack on with your work. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's nice you've got a sense of humour, so you will get on with all those army lot. I tell you, because we have a good laugh, but obviously we still want to get a few titles and hopefully and with your help. Play hard. Yeah, definitely. Do you want to finish off? Yeah, thank you very much, everybody. Um, I love the game. It's a privilege to talk about, about sport with, with table tennis enthusiasts. Uh, stay safe, and I hope you all get back to some table tennis soon. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you again, and take care. Take care. All bye the bye. best. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.
Hi everyone, I've only got 15 seconds, thanks for joining us tonight. Make sure you tune in, we've got Paralympian, gold medalist, you know, Will Bailey, MBE. I can't believe we've got him, he's amazing, he's just continuing our lineup, so hopefully you'll join us. We